Day there viewers, my name is Cliff and I'd like to welcome you to another episode in the series of How to Cut Gemstones. If this is your first time with us, allow me to extend a personal invitation for you to watch the process of how a gem is faceted and if you've been with us before, please allow me to thank you for joining me in another gem cutting show. In today's episode, we are featuring another unusual gem and it comes from Tanzania and it's called Confetti Sunstone. Sunstone also goes by the name Heliolite from the Greek Helios meaning sun and Lithos meaning stone. It's a member of the Feldspar family of minerals and this gem is formed from volcanic lava flows and has a close tie with the popular moonstone. Sunstone retails under different trading names including Illusion Sunstone, Tanza Sun and Masai Sunstone. In the year 2000, a young Maasai warrior from the Kenya and Tanzania border region discovered a sunstone deposit near Arusha in northern Tanzania. The flakes of bright red and orange hematite platelets in the stone mirrored the brightly coloured garments worn by the semi-nomadic Maasai tribe. So let's get started and please join me as we have some fun faceting some unusual gem material that comes from Tanzania. Before I could start faceting I had to preform the gem first to remove any flaws or any inclusions within the gem and it turned out to be a kite shape. For the benefit of new viewers, this is what we call the first transfer where the gem is actually glued onto a brass dop stick and placed in a transfer jig overnight to set. So the brass dop stick with the gem is placed into the quill of the faceting head. I'm going to set the index wheel to index number 8. I need to cut the first four pavilion facets starting with index 8 setting the protractor angle to 65 degrees. I just remembered before I start faceting I better throw in a design for you guys so you can see what I'm actually faceting. So I'm almost ready to start cutting the first facet on index 8 at 65 degrees. Then I have to facet three other facets at the following indexes which will be index 20, 44 and 56 at the same protractor angle at 65 degrees. As a side note I'm using a 64 index wheel. The first four facets have been cut at 65 degrees forming the basic outline of the gem. Now this particular design, the kite, which is really a freeform design is not my preferred option. It just happened to be that it suited the shape of the gem after the initial preform. But with these type of designs you need to be careful because you can get a lot of chipping on the sharp edges. So because this is the first time I've ever faceted confetti sunstone from Tanzania I think it's a good time to just test out and see how it polishes up on one of these facets. So I'm using this lightning lap again and I used it in my last video and it did a great job on quartz. So see how it goes on sunstone. After using the cerium oxide lightning lap, the facet appears quite well polished, 
but when I use a loop under higher magnification it's leaving behind little surface scratches so I would say this is a fail. Time to move on to plan B. I've decided to use a 9000 grit diamond paste on a Perspex lap and hopefully this does the trick. So the Perspex with the 9000 diamond compound did a better job of removing scratches and polishing but I'm still not happy because it's still leaving traces of scratches under high magnification and also my 3000 grit pre-polish is dragging out scratches on the surface also. So I will need to think over how I'm going to solve this problem but meanwhile I'll facet the girdle outline so I've set the protractor angle at 90 degrees and cut the four facets to create depth of the girdle. So as you can see I've cut the girdle facets and to do this I've used a 3000 grit diamond pre-polished disc. So I'm going to revisit the cerium oxide lightning lap and just see how I go at polishing these girdle facets. So the cerium oxide lightning lab did a good job on the girdle facets but when I cut the remaining step facets I'll try that again and see how I go with it. Here you can see I've cut the second step of the pavilion facets and I've set the protractor angle at 53 degrees and use the same index settings as on the first step. Finally the third step of the pavilion has been faceted at 43 degrees. I wouldn't facet under 42 degrees on sunstone because it has a low refractive index. In my efforts to polish these pavilion facets I've tried everything. The cerium oxide lightning lap was a the Perspex lap with the 9000 diamond compound paste was also a Then I used sewing machine oil on a tin lap with 50,000 grit diamond. Guess what? Finally the gloves were off, there were no holds barred, I decided to drag out the Herco valve oil and you know what happens next. As a last resort on a final polish when you cannot remove those scratches and you've tried everything, the Herco valve oil on a tin lap 
with 50,000 grit diamond compound will tear out a scratch like you wouldn't believe. The only downside is, is that this lubricant dries out really fast so you have to keep adding more droplets to the tin lap. In the following scenes you'll see that I've polished all the pavilion facets from the first tier, from the girdle, all the way down to the coulette. You'll notice also as the light refracts out of the gem you'll see all these glitters and sparkles. Those are not inclusions of flaws, that's actually the hematite that's flashing in the light. So it's time to facet the crown and we are on to the secondary transfer. The original dop is removed by heat. I'll be faceting two step cuts on the crown. The first step which will form the girdle where the protractor is set at 55 degrees and the index settings will be 8, 20, 44 and 56. The second step of the crown will be faceted at 42 degrees using the same index settings as on the first step of the crown. Here you can see that I've cut the first step of the crown and I've used a 3000 grit diamond disc and it's scratching the surface. The disc is not contaminated. I believe what's happening is that the hematite is getting dragged out of the stone and scratching the smooth surface. In this scene I've cut the second step in the crown and that angle was set on the protractor at 42 degrees using the same index settings as on the first step of the crown. And now I'm ready to start faceting the table so I've got my 45 degree angle adapter inserted into the quill of the faceting machine and then I'll be using the 3000 grit disc to cut that table. Now the table has been faceted, the next step is to polish the table and then I'll polish the rest of the crown facets. In the following scenes you'll see that I've polished all the crown facets starting from the table facet, then the first step which starts from the girdle and then the second step facets. To polish these facets I use the Herco valve oil using the 50,000 grit diamond compound 
and instead of taking me ages to do the pavilion, the crown facets literally took me only about 15 minutes from start to finish. I was glad that I overcame the issue with the scratching and from what I've read that the Oregon Sunstone with the Schiller in it also scratches easy. The clear variety is no problem and I've faceted that and that was pretty much a breeze to cut and polish. So it does appear that Sunstone that has Hematite or Schiller in it may possibly scratch easy and be difficult to polish. So once again we're getting closer to the end of this video. I would personally like to thank all my subscribers for joining me and taking the time to watch my videos and leaving comments. And don't forget about the final reveal that's coming up soon. So until next time, please like and subscribe. If you want to see future videos, you need to click on the notification bell. So it's bye for now. Take care everybody and see you in the next video.